بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد tonight our lesson is going to be on continuing part three on the danger of shirk the danger of shirk why shirk is so deadly and so dangerous we mentioned before uh, first and foremost why it's necessary why it is mandatory why it's important to learn about shirk the principles of shirk the foundations of shirk Okay, the ideas, ideals, and ideologies of shirk, or of the people of shirk. Why do people make shirk? Why do people worship the sun? Why do people call upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Why do people fear the jinn, slaughter for the jinn? Why do certain Muslims practice sorcery and offer things for the shayateen? There's a reason behind all of these acts. And there's a, a mindset of a mushrik, a mindset of a mushrik. And we all know to thoroughly understand something and to thoroughly uh, perform something, you, not, you, you also have to do what? You have to understand the ideology behind it as well. Now, I'm a master detective or investigator. In order to catch the serial killer, to catch this large criminal mastermind at large, he has to stop thinking like a police officer. He has to stop thinking like a detective. He can't think like a person of the law, but he has to actually think like the person that he's after, this accused or supposed criminal. He has to, he has to study his life. Why is he doing what he's, what, he, what he's doing in the first place? What made him do that? What caused him to do that? His traits, his patterns, his consistencies, inconsistencies. He has to put his head in the head of this serial killer, and that is how he eventually catches him. Or if he doesn't catch him, at worst, that's how he successfully allows the people to protect themselves from being his next victim. This is what he looks for. This is why. This is what time. This is the style. This is the place. These are the things that turns him on, turns him off, excites him, puts him in a rage to kill, etc. So you have to put yourself in a mindset of the opposite of the opponent. Everybody understand this? Everybody to become the enemy, as they say. To what? Become the enemy. Think in the head of the enemy. So to thoroughly understand shirk, polytheism, associating partners with Allah and worship, you have to understand why people make shirk. Mm -hmm. what, uh, all people who make shirk, bad, evil people, they don't want no good, they don't have no good, they don't do anything in life, they're just negative people, or there's a reason why they're making and doing what they're doing. So we mentioned this in the first session about the usul of shirk and the mabadid, the fundamental precepts of shirk. And we also talk about the types and why, the types of shirk, the categories, major shirk, minor shirk, shirk in statement, shirk in action, shirk when it comes to one's beliefs, shirk of doubt, and the list goes on. No? Okay, the aqsam and the anwa. And for a person himself to be wary, to be careful, and to warn others. We also spoke on the issue of sometimes you have to know that which is bad to stay away from it. And sometimes you can't appreciate that which is good unless you know the opposite. I love Islam so much because I know what it felt like not to be a Muslim. I love the light of Iman, of faith, belief in Allah, along with any partner, because I know the darkness of shirk, the darkness of kufr, the darkness of jahiliyyah. And this is with regards to one's heart, one's mind, one's soul, let alone the other problems of not being a Muslim. Okay, the things that come from you not living upon Islam. So no one can truly accept Islam uh, or no one can truly appreciate and understand Islam unless they've had a taste or vision, understanding of the opposite of what? Of Islam. Khairan, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyip. And we also mentioned about knowing about Jahiliyyah. Uh, and we spoke on uh, how the Sahaba were the best Muslims because of this, because they knew what Jahiliyyah was. They knew what it was like to worship idols, to slaughter for the jinn. They knew what it was like to say that the malaika, the angels, were the daughters of Allah. They knew what it was like to kill each other, to murder, to plunder, to rape. They knew what it was like to kill their children. They knew, they knew what it was like to have this, this, this darkness. They knew what it was. So when the light of Islam came through and via Muhammad, they grabbed, they grasped into it firmly, tightly, because they realized the opposite. 
And we also mentioned uh, the concept of the proofs in the Quran al Kareem that deal with shirk being the only sin that is not forgiven. In Surah An Nisa, verse 48, chapter 4, verse 48, Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, what is translated to mean it? Translated to mean, once again, Surah An Nisa, which is chapter 4. Verse 48, Allah says, Indeed, Allah forgives not for shirk to be made with him. Allah does not forgive for any shirk to be made with him. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ Sins, mistakes that are less than shirk, not as deadly as shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could possibly forgive them. لِمَنْ يَشَاء Whomever he pleases. Allah could forgive a murderer. Allah could forgive a thief. Allah could forgive a rapist. Allah could forgive any person that makes any type of horrible crime. But those who say that there's a partner with Allah, Allah is one of three, there's a second, there's a third. We can't call upon Allah directly. We can't worship God. And God only it has to be a savior, has to be a third. Allah does not forgive that, period. So this was the initial proof in the Quran al showing you the danger of shirk. It's so dangerous because it's the only sin that Allah, what? does not forgive. And any crime that you can think about that's bad and horrible and terrible and horrendous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive it for a Muslim. Someone was a child molester, wali adha billah, horrible. But it's not the same as shirk. Everybody understand this? The next verse that the author, rahimahullah, mentions, he says, وَقَالَ الْخَلِيلُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ And Al-Khalil, the close friend of Allah, Ibrahim, the Prophet Abraham, he said, وَجْنُبْنِي وَبْنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدُ الْأَصْنَامُ Allah says in chapter uh, 14, Surah Ibrahim, Allah, verse 35, وَجْنُبْنِي That Ibrahim, he said to Allah, Ibrahim, he called out to Allah, he says, وَجْنُبْنِي وَبْنِيَّ Oh Allah, please keep me and keep all of my children from worshipping idols. Protect us from worshipping idols. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, the one was considered to be the father of the monotheists, the leader of the monotheists, the imam of the muahideen, the one who smashed the idols with his own hand. He lied and he said that the big idol did it. Ask the big idol. The one who was thrown into the fire, the one who was persecuted, and uh, the list goes on of hardships and difficulties that he himself brought upon himself for the purpose of establishing the aqidah, the creed of Tawheed. He himself asked the law to protect him and his offspring, Ismail, and the rest of the prophets and the messengers, to be protected from worshipping idols. The verse then says, Rabbi innahunna adlalna kathira min nas Oh my Lord, he says, Rabbi, my Lord, innahunna, indeed these idols, shirk, they have misled countless men and women. They've misled countless men and women. So the point from the ayah is what? How can we say, how can we agree upon the fact that shirk is something that's dangerous and you have to stay away from? There are people today, Muslim, Munafiq, and outward Kafir, who say that shirk is not important. You don't have to study shirk. You don't have to learn shirk. We're Muslims. Everyone says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Why talk about shirk? Kalas. Just how some ignorant Muslims say, why do a conference on marriage? When people are already what? Married. Right. What's the point? This is just an ignorant way of thinking in life. Ignorant way of thinking in life. Rather, someone who's a master at something always continues to do what, Sheikh Khan? Learn more. Study more. Practice more. Or at worst, at best, he's going to learn something that he's learned for 50 years, but he learned something else. No. But at worst, he's going to at least be refreshed of the information. I've learned it. I've studied it. I've practiced it. But it's nothing wrong with being what? Being refreshed. Everybody understand this? So that's just not a scientific mind talking about any aspect of life, let alone Islam and Iman and Kufr. Those who say that shirk isn't, it isn't something we got to talk about. We need to talk about politics, which is not necessarily a bad statement. Politics are important, no doubt. We need to talk about jihad. It's not a bad statement. Jihad is of utmost importance in Islam. We need to talk about finance and money, economics, which is not a bad statement. Money is important in Islam. As they say, what? We won't say what they say. It's, it's a reality. Uh, they say cash rules. It's, it's no joke. It's real. Without money, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do on a daily basis. This is real. 
But for somebody to say that shirk is of no importance, and you don't have to talk about it, you shouldn't talk about it, it splits, it separates, it divides. It's the waste of time. You can learn the aqidah in 10 minutes. And that's all you need to know about shirk and tawheed. Just 10 minutes out of your whole life. That's sad. That's a very sad statement. That's a very sad approach and attitude to have when we look at the Qur'an. Not Ibn Abdul Wahab, not Suleiman Ibn Abdullah, not Ibn Baz, Ibn Taymiyyah, Uthaymin, Albani. When we look at the Qur'an, Allah tells us that Abraham, he who broke the idols himself, he feared and he was afraid of what? Fallen shirk. So if shirk was of nothing, no importance, you just hop, skip, and jump. You learn about it, five seconds, that's it. Why would the one who established the Tawheed and Aqidah ask Allah for that? Everybody understand the Wajhul Istidlal? The point from the ayah? Everybody, the point from the what? From the ayah. In other words, if you had a very wealthy man, Devin, somebody had a lot of money, right? And he said, I'm afraid of being hungry. I'm afraid of being hungry. Or a better example, a very wealthy man, you got a lot of money, he's a businessman, he's wise, he's savvy, really, really sharp businessman. He's known to be wise, and he says, I'm afraid of making a bad decision in business. I'm afraid of making a bad business deal. I'm afraid of somebody tricking me and duping me. Everybody understand this? This guy wants to do a deal, so I'm afraid of him tricking me. I'm afraid of him pulling, pulling one on, getting one on me. If he says that, what's knowledge, experience, who's lived his last 20 years, Buying, selling, trading, investing, perfecting his craft and his name and his brand and saving money and making other things. Then what do you think about? The layman that's not a businessman, let alone savvy, let alone successful, let alone experienced. He himself says, I'm afraid of this guy. I don't want to negotiate business with him. So you sit on the side and say, I'm not even going to what? I'm not even going to step in the room with him. If he's what? If he's worried. Everybody understand if he's what? If he's worried. So just stop and think about that now. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Qur'an is full of Ibrahim. Allah talks about Ibrahim. From the beginning of the Qur'an to the end of the Qur'an. Hmm? So the Baqarah, Allah talks about what? Ibrahim, the story of the construction of the Kaaba. Naam? With Yarfaw Ibrahim. With Ibtala Ibrahim, Rabbuhu bi karimat. Allah says that in the beginning of the Mus'haf al-Sharif, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah 2. Ha, in, Allah says, Suhafi Ibrahima, Musa. And Juz Amma, Allah also talks about Ibrahim. So beginning to end, Allah talks about what? Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Everybody understand this? And this is another strange point or sad point of many du'at, sheikhs, scholars. They talk about Ibrahim, Ibrahim, hajj, this, slaughter, kada, kada. You wrap up everything Ibrahim and these one, these three, four, five points. The main thing about Ibrahim, ya akhi, was tawheed. This is the main purpose of Allah telling us about Ibrahim was tawheed and aqidah. Main thing. And now he left his people, abandoned his people, boycotted his people because of shirk. Chapter 16, Allah says, uh, and talks about what? Or not, not chapter 17, F1. Allah Azza wa Jal, he tells us, Surah Al-Kahf. Everybody understand this? Surah Al-Kahf. Chapter 18. The main purpose of the story of the people of the cave was what? Their dog, how long they stood in the cave, how many years did they stay there? What, what was the main purpose of the story of the people of the cave? Tawheed and shirk. And the only reason why they left their people and went to the cave was because of what? So how can somebody, a Muslim, a student of knowledge, a scholar, someone intellectual, smart, say that studying shirk is not important? That person is intellectually miskeen. He's poor, bankrupt. His brain is the size, they say bird brain, we say back in the day. You ever seen a bird, how small a bird's head is? And then even smaller than a bird's head is his what? This is his brain. How can you say something like this? And Ibrahim himself, the one that Allah tells us about in the Quran, huh? in the hereafter, in the whom, Lamina Salihin. He's from the righteous. He's from the five major messengers. The people that the Prophet ﷺ spoke to when he ascended. Isra and Mi'raj. The people on the right side, on the left side. He can go on and on about Ibrahim and Islam. And his status, yet still, he never felt safe from what? Shirk. And not only him, but he also he said what? Wabaniyya. And my kids, who are the kids of Ibrahim? Let alone the next generation, the third generation. Everybody understand this? How many righteous men and women from among his children? Prophets, messengers, MBA, Rusul, how many? And he said, protect me and protect what? Them as well. So if that's Ibrahim talking, he said, Ibrahim is basically telling us in hundred words, shirk, learning shirk is what? Very important. important. You're saying that it's not important. You're not a follower of Ibrahim. Everybody understand this? It's just that simple. 
You're not a what? A follower of Ibrahim. And look how masterfully the author put the chapter together. He started off with talking how why shit gets so dangerous. It's the only sin that Allah doesn't forgive. Everybody understand that? Then the concept of qiyas. He made an analogy. If Ibrahim was afraid of it, then you should be afraid of it. An explanation we read in the second part of the class that the only way that a person can successfully avoid something and thoroughly stay away from it is by doing what? Knowing it. Knowing it learning it. Studying it. Reflecting on it. So we have a clear one plus one. Plus one equals what? Three. Three. Shirk is dangerous. Everybody can agree on that. Any Muslim, anyone who reads the Quran. And the reason why it's so dangerous, or the, the proof that it's so dangerous, that it's the only what? Killing, murder, interest, usury. Huh? Everybody understand this? Drinking alcohol, stealing the wealth of the orphans. Everybody understand this? Being a coward on the battlefield, slandering and chasing a Muslim woman. Huh? These are all destructive sins, major sins. But Allah forgives them, but He does not forgive what? Shirk. That clearly shows the ugliness of shirk. Everybody understand this? How to avoid something that you're totally ignorant of. That makes sense? You got to be what? You say street smart, so you won't be victimized. So you got to know what to look out for, right or wrong. Yeah. If you don't know that thing, then it's a high chance that you're going to be a what, Devin? Be a victim. Because the people want to, they're going to pray on you. You're sweet. You're green. You don't know what's going on. Huh? You sleep. Somebody's going to easily victimize you. But you know certain things, the opportunity or the chance of you being victimized, it could happen, but it's what? No doubt about that. All right, know what? No doubt about that. So the third and final step is this shirk is, is dangerous. The only way to avoid that danger is by knowing it. And it's important to talk about and to study. Not the only thing that we study. Not the only thing that we talk about. That's another extreme. Huh? But it is something that has to be spoken on and talk, talked about. Why? Because of Ibn Abdul Wahab. In the Saudi government, because of the first state, al Saud, it has to be. It's the only reason why Tawheed, this is what the people say. Muhammad Abdul Hayab was the one he brought this. He brought this concept of shirk and Tawheed, just to support and to legitimize huh, the government of Saud family. We say no, this is much bigger than him, Ibn Abdul Hayab and Saud. This is what Allah said. And we explained this before about Kitab Tawheed or any book of Ibn Abdul Hayab. You have to refute him and criticize him based off of science. Allah says, if you're different on anything, take it back to Allah and his messenger. So is shirk important or not? Saudi says it's not. I say it is. What is the judge between us? It's just that simple. And not my personality and who I'm with. No, that's, that's the, the, the hujjah. That's the, the proof of the coward. The proof of the coward. Hmm? He has to go find something cheap and easy. Everybody understand it's a trick. That's not a real scholar. A real scholar is going to deal with the facts, the information, and not the personalities. Everybody got this? So our creed as Muslims is not from Ibn Abdul Wahab, nor is it from Ibn Taymiyyah. It's not from Imam Ahmed. Our creed is from the Kitab and from the Sunnah. From the people that revived, from the people that explained, from the people that wrote, that defended, that fought, from the people that sacrificed is Flan and Flan and Flan and Flan. Allah used them from time to time, generation to generation, as pieces to defend. Everybody understand this? But that, these, these defenders themselves, they didn't make and create anything. But they just stood in the face of the opposite. Everybody understand this? But Ibn Abdul Hayyab, rahim al ta'ala, our aqid is not based off of what he wrote. What Ibn Taymiyyah, it's not what our aqid is based off of. Call Allah, call Rasulullah, call a Sahaba. Everybody got this or not? And it's of the utmost importance when you're talking to someone or trying to give someone da'wah. Everybody understand this? You're trying to refute some type of falsehood, you have to take it back to the original what? Source. Everybody understand this? Khayran, inshallah. So therefore, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, الأسلام, He says, Oh my Lord, protect me and my children from worshiping idols. الناس, because they have misled many people. From among those many people that Ibrahim said the idols have misled, or who? His father. Who else? Before them, the great thinkers, the great warriors, the great tacticians and military leaders, and this one and that one, great nations that built this, that built that, that established this years before technology, years before science, modern, modern things. They look at the marvels of the world, the wonders of the world. Do you think those people were stupid and dumb who built the pyramids? You think they, they didn't have strength? You think they, they didn't have ability and talent? 
to make all of the wonderful cities and civilizations in the past, yet and still, all of the smarts that they had, all of the power and strength that they had, Shaitan did what? He used the idols to do what? To mislead them. So if they were bigger, smarter, better, more advanced, and they were misled, then have I got this or not? Everybody understand this? Back to the example we made about the businessman. If he duped him, if he tricked him, then he can obviously, it's possible that he can what? Everybody understand how the verse is used here? How the verse is used what? Clear, like a sword, sharp, cut through any type of falsehood. And who in any sense, or in any sense, and also being fair and impartial, is going to reject that. You may reject Ibn Abdul Hab and the Saudis, but right, can you reject this? It's clear as day. He said that many people were misled by what? By idols. And among those many people were righteous, knowledgeable, strong people. Yet and still they fell victim to? Idols. To shirk. To shirk. Everybody got it or not? The Sharih Suleiman ibn Abdullah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Qawluhu wa qala al-khalilu alayhi salam wa junubni wa baniya an na'abud al-asnam as-sanamu ma kana manhutan ala surat al-bashar والوثن ما كان منحوتا على غير ذلك ذكر الطبري عن مجاهد وظاهر أن الصنم ما كان مصورا على أي صورة والوثن بخلافه كالحجر والبنية وإن كان الوثن قد يطرق على الصنم ذكر معناه غير واحد ويروى عن بعض السلف ما يدل عليه وقوله وجنبني أي اجعلني وبني في جانب عن عبادة الأصنام وبعد بيني وبينها he says here when Allah says الأصنام the word al-asnam is the plural of sanam, sad, noon, and a meme. And a sanam is that which is configured or constructed to look like a human being. It's an idol that looks like a human being. A head, legs, arms, a body, a face. You see those masks from different parts of the world, whether it's from the African continent, whether it's from the island of Hawaii, Nam, parts of South America. You see the what? The big face. Everybody understand this? A sunam is something that's made as an image of a man or a woman as well. Now, in the ancient relics of history, you see this. This woman, this god of fertility. Everybody understand this? That's a sunam. And the word wathan is something that is any shape, any figure. Huh? It, this could be a sun, a wathan. A wathan. We worship this thermos. We walk around this thermos, bow down and pray to this thermos. This thermos is our God. Everybody understand this? Or a representation of our God. Or the representation of a spirit that has powers to get to the biggest, strongest God, etc. So he's dealing with a technical issue here, those who study the Arabic language, because some, some texts say, Wathan, Othan. Al-Rijsa min al-Othan. Allah says in the Quran, Wathan. And other ayat and other hadith say what? Asnan, Sunan. Everybody understand this? So some of them say that it's anonymous, and others say that a sanam is in the form of a man, a human, and the wathan is what? Anything. Everybody understand this? Khair, inshallah. He then says, Rahimallah ta'ala, uh, when Allah Azza wa says, Wajnubni, it literally means to put me in a janib, put me on one side, and put the idols on another side, and not just protect me or keep me from it, but make me what? Far, not separate, no. Far. Separation is different. We got separation with one line, a border. Everybody understand this? That's not the same as a country, that's a what? An island. It's an island. And it's what? Far from any other country. And there are two countries that are on the what? On the border. You take one step and you're now in a different country. They're separated, different legislation, different jurisdiction, different rules, different religion, different politics, but that doesn't mean that they're what? Far. Got it or not? So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Oh Allah, keep me what? Far. So this word in itself, what Junubni, keep me far, proves something. Is that Abraham, he never said, Oh Allah, don't make me a mushrik. Don't allow me to be a mushrik. He said something deeper than that. He said, What, Ali? He said, What? Put the idols, what? And me and my children? Everybody understand this? And that can only be done through knowledge, through practice, and most importantly, through identity. Identity. How you identify yourself, how you carry yourself, how you look, how you walk, how you talk, how you eat, how you drink. Me and a mushrik are what? Totally separated. To the best of the ability. There's some things that all human beings are going to share. Some things that what? All human beings are going to share to an extent. 
But the general concept of every aspect of life, it has to be some type of what? Distinction. It has to be what? Some type of distinction. Muslims drive cars and Sikhs drive cars, but the Muslims' car is a bit different. The smell of the car, huh? the type of car, what's hanging from the, uh, 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 the mirror, whatever the case may be. Sikhs wear shoes, Muslims wear shoes. The Muslim shoes are different than the Sikh shoes. Muslims eat meat and Jews eat meat. But the meat that we eat is different. What heck is that? It has to be some type of what? Distinction. Everybody got this or not? And this is a way, distinction is a major way of keeping something what? Far. I'm nothing like you, Ali. We're not the same. Uh, my bank account is not like your bank account. And the proof for that is how I dress and how you dress. We both have on pants, but the amount of money that my pants cost is nothing like what? But they're still what? Pants. Still called pants. My pants cost $500. You're getting your pants from a thrift shop. It's no what? No resemblance whatsoever. So the price range between my pants and your pants, Ali, is called what? What's the word you would use? Not similarity. Far. Remoteness. It's what? Far. Not $100 and $200. $500 for a pair of pants and what? $5. It's what? Far. Everybody understand this? So this is what Ibrahim a.s. wanted Allah to do for him and for his what? Everybody got this? And that obviously can't come in what? Ten minutes. You can learn it in what? Ten minutes. Or just one talk. That's enough. And that, that's, that's, that's clearly doesn't make what? That makes sense. Let's see. Does it or not? Make sense to you? It just sounds stupid for somebody to talk that. Shame. If someone calls himself a scholar, an intellectual. That's horrible. I mean, do we realize this in 2017? We live in a year, an era of the LOL shake or the YouTube scholar or whatever the case may be. It's sad. If you're an intellectual, you can say something in which the next man may differ on. That's fine. You, you can have certain points in which you differ. You feel this, you feel that's That's tight. But an intellectual, a scholar, is always supposed to be of utmost mental sharpness. The way he thinks, the way he looks at life is supposed to be different than the layman, than the normal person, than someone who's a doctor. This person's a scholar. Everybody understand this? A thinker. How can you talk using cheap words and stuff like this, insulting people and saying, just scorning something? It's not the sunnah to do this. It's not the sunnah to do that. I say that it's the exact opposite. Wearing a thobe is not mandatory. Wearing a thobe is not obligatory. Okay. Certain types of thobes is not the sunnah, clearly. But to say that it's against the sunnah to wear a thobe. Against the sunnah. They may say even overseas. Not just in America. They may say that overseas. It's against the sunnah to wear a thobe. It's against the sunnah. And you call yourself an intellectual? And you talk like that? Muslims who wish to identify themselves like Muslims to be known, that's what now? Against the sunnah. That's not an intellectual talking like that. The intellectual has his proofs, he has evidences, he has his reason, and that's it. Class. I have to stoop down and talk and go to the extreme to, to please you and to convince you on my speech. Make sense or not? Everybody saying this? Shirk is not the only thing that we have to talk about. We have to explain other things. Islam, we can't get caught in extremes. But to say that you're going to be learning in 10 minutes, that as if that statement didn't come from somebody with a PhD. It's against the sunnah for you to wear a thobe in America because it's not the traditional dress of your people. That's, a, that's what a PhD has taught you to talk like? That's, that's, that's really sad. Everybody understand this? So Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he said, keep me far, keep my children far. He then says, فَإِذَا كَانَ إِبْرَهِيمُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَنِّبَ وَيُجَنِّبَ بَنِيهِ عِبَادَةِ الْأَصْنَامِ فَمَا ظَنُّكَ بِغَيْرِهِ He says, so if Ibrahim alayhi salam, if he asked Allah to protect him and to keep him far and the worship of idols, his children, he says, then what do you think about? Others. كَمَا قَالَ إِبْرَهِيمُ تَيْمِيُّ وَمَنْ يَأْمَنَ الْبَلَاءَ بَعْدَ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ he says, and who is safe from the bala, the affliction, the calamity, after Ibrahim a.s. If he wasn't safe from it, then who can be what? Can be safe from it. He says here, وَهَذَا يُجِبُوا لِلْقَلْبِ الْحَيْءَ أَنْ يَخَافَ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ لَكِمَا يُقُولُ الْجُهَالِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَا يَقَعُ فِي هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ وَلِهَذَا أَمِنُ الشِّرْكَ فَوَقَعُوا فِيهِ وَهَذَا وَجْهُ مُنَاسِبَةِ الْآيَةِ لِتَرْجُمَة He then says, if this is the case, يُوجِبُ لِلْقَلْبِ الْحَيِّ He says, then there is not a requirement 
the heart that is alive, al qalb al hayy, the living heart. The dead heart is different. If your heart is dead, it's a different story. Huh? But the heart that actually is alive is now a necessity to be afraid of shirk. If Ibrahim was afraid, then I don't have any common sense and any life in my heart. I must now be what? Afraid. Yujib is wajib now. And that's only a common mathematical equation. One plus one equals what? It's just that simple. If he was afraid, then what? I mean, if you have any life left in your heart. He then says, not as the ignorant people say. And look at the author. How many hundreds of years ago did he live? And they had people that were ignorant, whether it was scholars, muftis, qadis, enemies against him, against the movement back then. And he called them what? Juha. They're ignorant people who said that shirk would never happen in this ummah. There's no shirk. That's, there's no such thing as shirk anymore. Since Muhammad came and destroyed the, the idols in the Kaaba, there's no such thing as what? Shirk. It's done. There's no more shirk that's ever going to happen in the Muslims. There's no such thing as apostasy, as ridda. There's no such thing as what? Apostasy. There's no such thing as shirk. How can that be? He says, not like these ignorant people say. He says, these people, they are safe. They felt safe from shirk. And once they felt safe from it, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. They didn't what? Waka'u fihi. That's the reason why they what? Fell into it. Everybody understand this? That's the reason why you what? You got robbed and you got stuck up because you let your guard down. You don't watch your back. You forgot about just being street smart. You forgot about it. You let your guard down and all it takes is what? One time for somebody to run up on you. And then that's it. Class. Game over. Because you, you, let, huh? you became what? Slapped. You became laxed. And that's why you fall into becoming a victim. But if you always got your guard up, you're always being aware, paying attention. You don't have to be paranoid, but just common sense, being aware of your surroundings. Everybody understand this? It's not as likely to happen to you. And just stop and look at this. Look at the different countries. Look at the different movements. Look at the different methabs. The people that were against Ibn Abdul Hab, against his movement, against his revival system. Just look around the world and you find the Tamima, the Tiwala. You find the Nazar, the eyepieces, you find the graves, you find all the different shirk and bid'ah rampant among them. Do you think that's an accident? Do you think it's an accident? The less Tawheed is talked about and spoken on, the less knowledge is there, the more it is what? Shirk and bid'ah. There's no doubt about that. Anyone who's traveled in the Muslim world clearly sees that. This is not the case. And the more revival it is, the more importance to knowledge is given, the less shirk and bid'ah there is. I understand this. This is a very important concept here. When you feel safe from a thing, you're going to, in most cases, what? Fall into that thing. It can't happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. Not me. No, that's not. When you have the attitude, in most cases, what? You end up falling to it. Everybody understand this? He then says, uh, and this is the, the munasabah, or wajhul munasabah. This is the appropriateness between the verse and the Chapter heading. Everybody got it? That's how they mix as we do in Lulu Marjan. He then says, Rahimullah, call out with a hadith. Akhwa for my Akhwa, Alekum, a shirkul asgar, for soila an, for call a ria. Haka the aura del Musani for Hadal Hadith and Muhtasara, Gaira Mazu. Waka the Rawahu Imam Ahmed, or Taburani, would be Duny or Behaki of his Zuhd. Waha the Lafu Ahmed, the Kala had death and a Yunus, Kala death and a late Ayazid, Yan Ebn al Had, and Amr and Mahmoud bin al Abidin, and Rasulullah Sayyid Salam Akal. إن أخوف ما أخاف عليكم الشرك الأصغر قال وما الشرك الأصغر يا رسول الله قال الرياء يقول الله يوم القيامة إذا جز الناس في أعمالهم اذهبوا إلى الذين كنتم ترؤون في الدنيا فانظروا هل تجدون عندهم جزاء قال المذري ومحمود بن لبيد رأى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يسح له منه السماع ولم يسح له منه السماع فيما أرى وذكر ابن أبي حاتم أن البخاري قال له صحبة أو قال له صحبة قال وقال أبي لا تعرف له صحبة ورجح ابن عبد البر والحافظ أن له صحبة وقال جل الرواية عن الصحابة وقد رواه تبراني بإسناد جيد عن محمود بن بيد عن رافع بن خديج وقيل إن حديث محمود هو الصواب دون ذكر رافع مات محمود سنة ستة وتسعين وقيل سنة سبع ولو تسع تسع سنة he then says the next proof the next evidence is in the hadith, Ibn Abdul Wahab, he says, Wafil hadith, in the hadith it states, the thing that I fear most upon, upon you, the biggest thing, the most harmful thing upon you, listen to this hadith, and compare it to the statement of those who say there's no shirk. Learn it in 10 minutes, study it one day, have one seminar, that's it. The Prophet, of course, says, Akhwaf, the thing that I fear most, not something that I'm afraid of, the thing that I'm most afraid of 
is a shirk al asghar, is minor shirk. Minor shirk. The companions they said, What is minor shirk? What's meant by minor shirk? He said, Ar riya. He says, Showing off. It's for the people to do things, to say things that are means of worship, for the praise, for the lauding of the what? Of the people. Everybody understand this? For the clapping and the patting of the people. Uh, Sheikh Suleiman, he says, This is how the author mentioned this hadith, and he didn't quote where it came from. He says, This hadith has been collected by Imam Ahmed and others. Imam Ahmed, he said, Hadathana Yunus. What would we call this? It's not. The what? The Isnad. Huh? The what? The Isnad. It's the chain of narration, like the conference. Imam Muhammad says, Hadathana Yunus. That Yunus is the teacher of Imam Ahmed. And the chain starts from backwards to, to the beginning. I understand this or not? You got it or not? Tayyip. In the Hadith, we have how many parts? Two. Two parts. How many parts of an insect are there? Three. What are they? Ascent. Head, the thorax, and the what? And the abdomen. This is important. Something that you learn, what? First grade, preschool, you never forget it. You know, the little nursery songs, head, thorax, abdomen. Everybody understand this is important. You never learned that. Uh, yeah. I, that's why I knew, I knew that you knew it. Everybody understand this? Head, thorax, abdomen. How many legs on the insect? Six. Uh, and this goes on. This is basic stuff. So in a hadith, we have how many parts? Two. It's only two, not an insect. Uh, uh, we have how many parts? Two parts of a hadith. We have the isnad or the senate, and then we have the what? The metin. The metin. Everybody understand this? Most of the times you hear the what? The metin. Such as what? Shaykh Khan, give us a metin. Any hadith. Any hadith. Authentic, da'if, whatever. Any hadith that you come, comes to your head. Any hadith. You're thinking too much. Any hadith. Think of a hadith. English, anything. These are based on? Intentions. What about Jannah? Seek knowledge even if it's in? China. Famous hadith. Seek knowledge even if it's in go to what? China or that dinu nasiya. The religion is advice or ad dunya mata wa khayru mata ad dunya wa marat salihah. The worldly life is an enjoyment, means of pleasure, means of outfitting, and the best things of the dunya is a righteous woman. A hadith like what? Ma haku zawjati ahadina alayhi. Qala an tutimha idha tutimta, wa taksuha idha ktesayta or idha ktesabta. ولا تضرب الوجه ولا تهجر إلا طيب حديث means what the prophet was asked what is the rights of our wives what are the rights of our what of our wives that's called a what hadith but it's missing a part that's nothing more than a what it's the metan that's the actual text the actual what report how did that report get to us how do we get this text this statement this paragraph where did it come from did it Fly from thin air. There you go. It was narrated, and that narration or that means the narration is called the isnad or the senad. Got it? The chain of narrators, and then there's the narration. The chain of reporters, and then there is the report. So when Imam Ahmed, who's a collector of hadith, he has a collection of hadith. He tells you that I heard this hadith from Yunus. Imam Bukhari says I heard this hadith from. Imam Ahmed, good. Or, no, not Zuhri, la, not Muslim, no. Muslim was a, was a disciple of Bukhari. Anybody, everybody got this or not? Musa ibn Ismail. Nah, exactly. Musa did. Seen, not a sheen. It's Haqim Ibrahim. Everybody got this? So Imam Ahmed, he says, Hadathana Yunus, who has said, Hadathana, I heard it, or it reported to me from Laith, from Yazid ibn Al-Had, from Amr, from Mahmud ibn Labid. Mahmud ibn Labid is the name of the one that's reporting directly from the Prophet. That the Messenger of Allah, said, 
the thing that I fear most, the thing that I'm most afraid for you is shirk asghar. Is what? Shirk asghar. Minus shirk. And they asked him, what is shirk asghar, O Messenger of Allah? He said, al-riya, showing off. On the day of judgment, Allah will say, when all of the people get their rewards, good and bad, jannah, hellfire, Allah will say to these shower offers, He'll say to them, go to the people that you used to what? Show off for. Fanduru. Huh? Look and see. Hal tajiduna indahum jazaan. Any rewards they have with them? Fadl. See what you get with them. For showing off for this one and for that one. This brother, this sister, this sheikh, these people. See what they can do for you when? On the day of what? Qiyamah. See what they can do for you on that day. Everybody understand this? Uh, then the author, Sheikh Suleiman, rahimahullah, he discusses the issue of this man, Mahmoud ibn Labid. His name is Mahmoud, the son of Labid. Is he a Sahabi or not? Is he a companion or what? Or not? This part shows us, what, what is this class about? What is this book about? Aqeedah, no doubt. So he, everybody understand this? Yet and still the author is discussing issues of? Hadith, to show you the importance and the superiority of hadith. Everybody understand this? In some hadith books, do you think issues of aqidah are going to come up like this? Of course not. From time to time, very, very scarcely, sparsely, however you want to say it. But in books of aqidah, books of fiqh, books of tafsir, there's plenty of what? Hadith. The hadith is the dominant science. There's no doubt about that. Everybody understand this or not? They're discussing all of these technical terms. Hadithana. I don't want to study hadith, but you have to know something about it in order to become a master of the sciences. Everybody got this? Everybody understand this? So they say that this man, Mahmoud ibn Nabid, what did this man, Mahmoud ibn Nabid, report? What did he report? What did the man, Mahmoud ibn Nabid, report? What hadith? What hadith, Nahyan? Not fear. He says, Akhwaf. The thing that I what? Fear most. The thing that I what? Fear the most upon you, not my ummah. He says, Alaykum, speaking to the Sahaba and those who came after them, obviously, is what? Shirk al So, what does the rest of the hadith say? They asked him what Shirk al is. He said it is? Ariyah. Another version of the hadith states what? On the day of judgment, when Allah. No, not judges. He gave the people there what? The rewards. Those who worship the law, those who worship other than law. Then it remain the people that are showing off. Everybody understand this? In other words, the people are going to be saying, like, you know, where's ours? Everybody understand this? Somebody comes, I've answered all the questions, and there's one brother left. Sufyan says, well, You didn't answer my question, Mufti. I said, Go to your other teacher. The one that you abandoned me for, go to him. It's a reality. Brothers, they come to the night shit, and they don't come often. So how they come see you in the supermarket? Sheikh Mufti, I have a question. I can't help you. Go what? <laughs> Go to your sheikh. <laughs> Everybody understand this? Ah, uh, brother said, Akhi, can you send me the explanation of this hadith some years ago? Subhanallah. I would look for it. I couldn't find what you told us years ago. I can't find it. Can you tell me? <laughs> I, should, I could have said to him, what? Idhabu, <laughs> what? Go to the sheikh. Naam? <laughs> No, not years, no. The sheikh that, that's... Uh, Last week. Anyway, I'm a deviant, he's not. Go ask him, we'll find those, those for what? <laughs> From Fatul Bari. Everybody got this or not? No. <laughs> we clear on this or not? But right, we're going to stop here tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should know best. Walhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. We shall see.